I've got a question, Budget Paper 4, Volume 1, page 198. Minister, can you please advise the committee of the progress of the government's reforms in vocational education and, in particular, how the government's going to get more school students into apprenticeships, traineeships and other vocational pathways that will lead into jobs? Look, I thank the member for Chafee for this question. I think that there's uh, a dramatic uh, need for reform in this area that has been really needed for some time and the opportunity to have more of our young people on a pathway to a positive employment outcome uh, has never been more important than at this time where uh, the, uh, the economy has taken such a hit and people have been concerned about their futures. Um, their future well-being. We took to the election a really important policy of providing $200 million uh, to enhance uh, educational outcomes for apprentices and trainees, employment outcomes for apprentices and trainees, uh, and indeed that has been a significant effort of both the Education Department and also the Department for Innovation and Skills, and indeed it's been heartening in the last uh, year to see South Australia really bucking the national trend in relation to commencements of apprenticeships and traineeships. Uh, dramatically improving in South Australia at a time where they've continued to go backwards around the country. And that has continued as recently as, uh, as the figures I saw earlier this year. And schools are an important part of that. So um, one of the things that we want to make sure our schools are doing is really looking at this from a point of view of pathways from a student that enables them to get their say. So it's an important part of their education, but be on a pathway to employment if they're undertaking vocational education. The VEP for school students policy announced in October last year really brings industry and schools together to clearly articulate those pathways. The department, in partnership with industry over the, over the months since, uh, I'm really proud, has developed 27 what we call flexible industry pathways. They map out a student's journey through secondary school and they articulate the qualifications, the trainings and skills that are required by employers in a number of those key growth industries in our state. So as part of a flexible industry pathway, uh, which I'm going to call a FIP, uh, actually, now I think I'll call it a flexible industry pathway on, on reflection. Uh, schools are supported to use the flexibilities in the space to tailor a learning experience to students' chosen pathways. So the first pathway commenced in July with 18 students commencing at ASC Shipbuilding Readiness Training Program at Osborne. Uh, the program supports students to complete their SACE while undertaking a certificate to in engineering and beginning a paid traineeship in the defence industry. The ASC plan to take 100... One, sorry, the ASC plans to take on 1,000 students as trainees throughout the lifetime of the $90 billion uh, shipbuilding project, and a further 22 students will commence that program in December. These are students from around uh, schools, uh, not just one school, but students who have an interest in going to work in this area. They are working in this area now while they complete their SACE, and they're also getting further qualifications to boot. So schools are also partnering with industry to give students exposure to workplaces and employers through the Industry and Employer Immersion Program. The program immerses students in workplace activities such as industry challenges or competitions, workplace visits, career expos and events, virtual work experience and work-related projects. For example, the department's capital works program has provided the opportunity for schools to work with builders and subcontractors on site to immerse students in their building projects, exposing them to the workplace and building awareness of the building and construction industry. For students interested in pursuing a career in the building and construction industry, opportunities for apprenticeships and traineeships exist through a flexible industry pathway. But can I say how exciting it is for those students who are seeing schools, their school potentially, transformed, and at the same time, those students can have the opportunity to be part of that transformation, getting qualifications but actually contributing to the work. And I really want to express my particular appreciation to those employers, those businesses who have engaged with the Department for Education, uh, those builders who have wanted to get some apprenticeships and traineeships and uh, industry engagement students on site being part of their builds. Uh, because they know that these are going to be the workforce that they're going to have in the future. They want them to be energised and motivated and to uh, develop the right skills uh, from an early age so that they can have prosperous careers in that really growing industry. 
Uh, the department's also working on enhancing career education schools. This is a really important part of the mix. And we've developed guidelines for best practice career education to ensure that every student has industry engagement opportunities, understands their pathway options, and can manage their career across their lifetime. The World of Work Challenge, or the WOW Challenge, as I'm being encouraged by some to call it, uh, will launch in 2021. It will encourage students in years 7 to 10 to participate in 100 hours of work exposure, including work experience, industry events, volunteering and careers expos. The WOW Challenge, or potentially the World of Work Challenge, uh, will enable students to learn firsthand from employers about employment opportunities, the skills that are valued in the workplace, supporting students to make informed decisions about their learning and pathway options as they approach senior secondary school. In preparation for full implementation in 2022, a series of early adopter projects will be piloted in schools through 2021, including the flex flexible industry pathways. Mm. <laughs> Apologise for that. Uh, the Pathways Readiness and Employability Program for those students who need further foundational skills to prepare them for the workforce or VET, and a broader area partnership hub and spoke model to support schools to collaborate and share resources. I'm really excited about the work that's been done here, and I think in the years ahead we're going to see the fruits of it identified as more and more of our young people are well on the way with qualifications underway, getting their SACE, and also a contract of employment and training already underway in, in industry, uh, and we're going to need it to meet the workforce needs of the futures because there's significant areas, whether it's shipbuilding, uh, whether it's care, whether it's building industry, where we know we're going to need people working in these industries. So getting young people excited about them and on their way to those careers is a really important part of the puzzle.